Lilia Walker from Billy Sewing Studio, Manuel Baptist King Center. Now today we are going to look at interfacing. Here I have the pelon as it is called. It is used between the garment and the facing. So that's why it is called interfacing. It's sold by the yard and you have your finished edges just like when you're buying the fabric. So it carries length wise and it carries width wise. So whenever you're using the pelon, you have to make sure that the length of the garment is on the length of the pelon. All right, so I have it on the table. I fold it on the table. And I'm going to cut the interfacing to match my jacket. So I have the jacket cut already. Now there are two types they have, the one that you're based on and the one that you press on. I tend to prefer this one, which is a press on one. So you would cut to the shape of the facing, use very hot iron, and you're going to press it on to the facing itself. All right? So this is my facing for the jacket, and I'm going to place it on the back the color. Now to make sure the facing is accurate, I tend to put the garment on top to make sure my angle is correct. Remember, this is a curved jacket, so you have to keep it in the same effect like the jacket itself. So I normally put the facing onto the pattern, then I put the garment on top, in this case the jacket, to make sure that my facing is lined on correctly. Because of the angle at which the facing is cut, you might find that sometimes when you're cutting your interfacing, it might be lined on properly. So I check back like that, using the jacket, then I take the jacket off, and then I'm ready to cut. But I tend to pin before I cut as well, because I do not want any movement on the pillow, right? So I put some pins to hold it in place. You're going to be cutting just the exact same shape of the pattern. So you cut around your neckline and cut across the shoulder. Okay. Then you're going to cut onto the facing so the same shape. So your interfacing, which is your pattern, is cut to the same shape of what you're going to be facing. It's very important or it will spoil your garment. So you make sure this cut to the same shape. Same shape and same grain. Lengthwise. Lengthwise. So we'll press the interfacing onto the facing before it's applied. So I come around here, put this to the same shape that I cut on it. All right, so there we have it. That's your facing, the interfacing cut to the exact same shape. See, it has to be the exact same shape of the facing. So I'm putting the interfacing in the facing and I'm also going to cut interfacing for the collar. So we're going to be putting it into the collar as well. Now when you're cutting it for the collar, it is cut single. Now you notice that I cut the, this one on the, on the fold because I need the two pieces. But for the collar, you will need only one piece. All right, so I put the collar on. And I'm going to cut just one piece. So what we'll do, we'll press the interface down one side of the collar. The collar is on a straight grain, so we cut this on a straight grain as well. Okay, pin to hold it in place for your cut. 
So the interfacing then is used as a form of stiffening to add firmness to your lapel and your collar. So facing is used to face your raw edges of your garment and interfacing goes between the facing and the garment and is for stiffening to make the garment fit firm. All right, you have two types of, of interfacing, the press on one, all right, so that's single. Press on one and then baste on. One you have to baste on and one you have to press on. So this one is a press on. Okay. So you would put the, face, the interfacing onto the facing before the facing is applied to the garment. Thanks for watching. I'm Billy Walker from Bill Sewing Studio. Happy sewing.